Why do men think about the Roman Empire every day? There's been a very popular TikTok, and I suppose it's moved past that meme, in which girls ask their boyfriends, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? And they say, generally, about every day. About every day I think about the Roman Empire. And this is mind-boggling to these girls. And I think it, it offers a bit of insight, perhaps a bit of, it's a bit reductive, but we're going to have to be reductive. We're going to have to talk about the, the gender, the gender wars. But I'm going to try to illustrate it in a Jungian manner, which is to say the function of the anima and the function of the animus, rather than there being some kind of like, you know, uh, essential nature to, to the boy or the girl, whatever. Let's get into it. Men, men, men be thinking, men be thinking about the Roman Empire. Women, women be talking and women be shopping. But men be thinking about the Roman Empire. Why? Because the connection to the collective unconscious is profound in them. Because day-to-day -day life means very little in comparison with the temporal. The spatial is reduced. Unless it is, unless it is a space of power or a space of comfort, it's generally a threatening environment. A man wants to erect. Yeah, you know, a man wants to erect something that will survive throughout history. This is the drive of man, and this is what has produced man's greatest things. Man erects an obelisk. Man erects a pyramid. Man erects a government, and so on. Man erects a technology. These are impositions on the ephemeral nature of time, which is feminine. Things by nature die and go away. No one lives forever, nothing lasts forever. But men refuse to accept this, to the point where the past takes on profound importance, an obsession with history, an obsession with what men have done, and thus what men can do. Men want to erect the future and erect themselves in the future to immortalize themselves and ultimately immortalize their cock. Now, women don't have this drive, generally. Women are more focused on people, on the people around them, on the life that they're living. Um, the idea of thinking about something that occurred, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago, and without really, without much of an emotional connection, but make no mistake, men, men are emotional about it, particularly about the potential of immortality and the, the dynamics that occurred in that time period. Um, it simply does not function in the same way for men and women, history, that is. Um, you know, it takes a narrative to appeal to women, uh, an emotional narrative. Again, I'm being reductive. The anima is the emotion. The animus is logic, but both are not really uh, fully gendered. You know, they exist in all of us. So an anima-possessed man is certainly not going to have the same thoughts about the Roman Empire that a, a man with a weak anima has. And the same goes for a woman with a strong animus. She's gonna be thinking about the Roman Empire every day as well. Uh, so, you know, we, we can't get too deep into the gender ward silliness. But basically, men care about the past because they want to immortalize themselves in the future. Women want to reproduce and focus on the people around them. That's the basic gender divide, and that's why men think about the Roman Empire every day. A complimentary meme that you'll find especially on TikTok, girls posting pictures of celebrities. 
and, uh, and parts of TV shows saying, this is my Roman Empire. I think that's really funny. I think the idea of, you know, this emotional dynamic being the thing that you think of daily versus the kind of systematic archaic. And I think that we can apply this directly to relationships. I need a light. Last time I gave her that job. Anyway, what I think it shows us is that Men, just as they want to erect, to erect in history, they want to erect statues and monoliths and things. They also want to immortalize their emotional relationships. Ideally, ideally, you know, a man has a relationship and changes nothing. You know, we're going to do the same thing every day. We're just going to do this and that. You know, I don't want you to, I don't want you to change. I don't want you to feel upset. I don't want to change. You know, I'm going to play my video games every day, or maybe if it's good, you know, I'm going to go to work every day. Things are going to be fine. We're going to keep things exactly the same forever. I don't, I don't think that women like that. I'm going to be honest. I think that the, the changes that simply occur naturally daily, uh, you know, according to the lunar cycle are vitally important and must be seen. The male hormonal cycle is 24 hours and it follows the pattern of the sun. The female hormonal cycle follows the pattern of the moon. It takes a month. That difference is the key to all uh, experienced gender discourse. If it was seen purely magically, purely as the solar and the lunar, and the nature of their interactions, we would see past it all. You know, I've talked about Sisyphus as the solar myth, as the solar myth being daily renewal, a daily cycle. The man is on this daily cycle and is generally curious, how do I make my day better? As Ben Franklin said, what good can I do with this day? But the lunar cycle, it's much more spread out. It's much longer. Things change in a month. A lot can change in a month. We know that in a New York minute, everything can change. What can change in a day? What can change in a month? The idea of thinking back to ancient history to, to get a, a vision of an emotional dynamic is, I think, generally one that's very, it's a very old idea. And to a degree, it's, it's a conservative idea in the very traditional sense of that word. The idea that the past matters or that the past does have answers to our current problems, which I do think it does. Um, it, it requires a bit of academic study. You need, to, you need to read things or you at least need to listen to old people to get an idea of the past, to conceptualize a past and especially a daily past. Here's something interesting as well. We can kind of prove that this distinction between women being focused on their life, on the life and the life experience versus men being focused on these kind of big systematic events. Um, historians in the past did not write about normal stuff. They wrote about battles and wars and kings and queens. They did not write about, you know, what did people use to shave? What did people eat? Where would they go? Where would they hang out? What were they drinking? What were they eating? All of that has to be rediscovered, you know, by artifacts and stuff. We have no idea. And something I've even read about is that there are artifacts that historians will find. And because they are men, they, they don't know what it is. And they're like, this is a, a prayer object. It's a ritual object. And then, you know, a woman will come in who, who, who uh, knits. She'll be like, oh, you know, this is a part of, a, of a, an ancient sewing kit. We, we use something very similar now. You know, 
the, the focus on parts of life is so great that it, it marks our history and demarcates what history is. Hitherto, history has not been her story. It has been his story. And we need to change that. We need to change it now. We need to focus on her and on her life. As long as she writes it down, we can. That is why Tumblr and social media has been a boon to feminine history and will continue to be. The empire never ended. As a skeleton, it has lived on, demanding to be reborn, aeon by aeon. Every video that you make about the Roman Empire and how much you think about it is reconstructing the Roman Empire. Your videos, your thoughts, every cool YouTube video that you watch about Roman engineering and Roman history is actually doing something as great as the Romans, believe it or not. As always, remember, memes matter. Actually, the Parthenon is a Greek structure, not a Roman structure. This video doesn't make any sense. <laughs>